Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, this time with episode number 14 of my short subject series entitled Silver and Deming Drill Bits. What are Silver and Deming Drill Bits? And what are Silver and Deming Bits? Well, the reduced shank or step bits or blacksmith bits, there's a lot of different names for them and you can get them in a set of eight like this, generally made overseas as you well know and they typically run in size from nine sixteenths up to one inch, although you could buy them individually in larger sizes as well and the beauty of these is that you can hold them in a standard Jacobs chuck because they have one half inch shanks on them and the overall length is minimal. And where did they get the name Silver and Deming? Well back before the Civil War in the 1850s, not the Spanish Civil War, I mean the United States Civil War, there were two men out east and one's name was Albert Silver and the other was John Deming and they had a firm that made farm implements and woodworking machinery and things like that and I'll give you a brief history of this at the end of this video and that came from vintage machinery so check that out if you're interested in a little history about these drill bits. Surprisingly enough a set of these drill bits from the big freight store is about forty or fifty dollars pretty reasonable for high speed bits considering that and I just went to Ace Hardware 15 minutes ago that one drill bit in the 5.8 size, these are Milwaukee's, is $22. But what I have found with these import bits, and they're pretty consistent with their bad quality, is that they are sharpened incorrectly. This drill bit will not cut at all. It will rub. Can you see that it has actually slightly negative clearance here? Rotate it around, not quite as bad on that side, they don't even have both lips ground the same, but that's actually negative. And most of these are bad and have to be reground. hopefully you have the ability to do that. This is what a correctly ground drill bit looks like on the end, on the cutting end, where the lip here is higher than the heel. These silver or Deming bits do not have flats on the shank and you can see how they slip. The larger the bit the more likely it is to slip in the chuck and chew up the shank and then you have to grind them down or, or file them down. But some bits, not from this set, have three flats on there. So they will grip in a Jacob chuck without slipping. Did you watch my recent video where I talked about stubby drill bits and that was a popular video and I was surprised at how many people appreciate these but in some ways we can call these stubby bits in the larger size so look at the length comparison between a silver and Deming and a standard jobbers length taper shank bit. This bit is six inches long this one is 11 or 12 inches long. Again, that's a big deal when you're working on a milling machine. I have quite a few other sets of bits like these. This is a stand that I made myself and I had these drills long before I had the silver and Deming. But looking at the shanks of some sample bits here, you can see how chewed up this one is from slipping. Now when you look at this one, this has flats on it, but the flats are so narrow you might not even be able to see them and it did not prevent the chuck from slipping. Or the drill from slipping in the chuck is what I actually meant to say. But in some cases over the years I made my own stubby bits. You can see how short that one is. And I milled the three flats on there. And in some cases I even shortened up the shank just a little bit to give me a stubby bit, much desired and much coveted by the machinist. Step bits have been around for a long time in the smaller sizes as well and were particularly handy for some of the portable drills, electric drills that did not take uh, the larger shank. So you can see here a whole set of reduced shank 
not a whole set, it's a partial set. Here's another example of someone that was desperate someplace along the line. They already had a reduced half inch and they had to reduce it to quarter inch, but you know that would slip like crazy. But in my selection of drill bits, and I have thousands, I know I talk too much. You know, there's another whole cup of reduced shank bits. Boy, there's a stubby one. Most drill presses that you might find in a small shop do not have removable chucks and they do not support or have a socket that allows you to use taper shank drill bits. So silver and Demings are ideal for that because they're short and can easily be chucked up without any extra effort or special equipment. But you can see how far you'd have to drop the table even if this drill press would accommodate taper shank bits. Okay, I'm over at the Bridgeport Mill and you will find that a milling machine is particularly uh, useful with this type of bit. But holding this in a collet like this, you can see that it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. But the problem is, these are going to slip in a collet. It's almost guaranteed. The, these do not have the gripping power, I don't believe, as a Jacobs chuck does using the three flats. So it's preferable to use probably your Jacobs chuck. However, and that's not going to slip if you got the three flat spots, but that adds about three inches onto the length. And I know that I'm talking a lot about the space in here, but after that last video, I realized that that is a big deal to most of my viewers as far as raising and lowering the table, or if you have a tabletop mill, cranking that up and down, and sometimes you lose your tram. If you were to be using a taper shank bit like this, you would have to hold this number two in this type of adapter. And that's fine, but look at the length of this whole thing here compared to the silver and Deming. And it's even worse with larger bits. Well, let me show you. If you're going to use a drill bit with a number three Morris taper, you cannot use this adapter that I just showed you. You have to use this adapter, and it is even longer. Matter of fact, it's outrageously long and almost unusable. Certainly would be unusable in a tabletop mill because you got this extra length here because of the number three. Again, as opposed to what would I do with the other one? This one. The reason that I'm spending so much time talking about drill bits in these recent videos is that if you examine it or you think about it carefully, probably 75% of everything you do in a machine shop revolves around either drilling holes or boring holes or forming holes in one way or another. So drilling is really very important. So get your set self a set of these silver and Deming bits, reasonably priced if they are made you know where, and uh, you'll find them extremely useful, but again, you probably will have to resharpen them unless they've become a little smarter over there in the Pacific, which I doubt it. However, you probably can buy a quality set of these from Cleveland, but you would need a bank loan. Now stay tuned for that little history lesson about Silver and Deming. You can pause your video to read that. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now and be sure and watch all of my 13 or 1400 shop videos. See you next time. Here is the article on Silver and Deming Manufacturing Company. Pause your video if you wish to read this.